Hi, welcome to the Starry Starry Night Event Coach Training. We're glad that uh, you're able to watch and we have some really good resources to show you today. I will get right to it and show you my desktop so we can look at some resources. All right. My name is Susan Ogden and I've been the Starry Night Supervisor for many years, maybe a dozen. And I got started because my son wanted to do Starry Starry Night when he was in third grade. So I coached it and then here we are years later. Um, so the scope this year is uh, you can see in the rules. The solar system is part one, so we will learn terminology, orbital mechanics, seasons, moon phases, eclipses, uh, all kinds of things like that and that have to do with the solar system. Part two, we'll talk about the celestial sphere and constellations, and that's where we will talk about using the star charts also. Part three this year is deep space. So we'll be talking about galaxies, nebula, star evolution. And part four will be telescopes. And the kids will have to be able to identify a picture of a telescope as well as understand the important findings of those telescopes. Uh, parts three and four will switch every other year to different topics. So if you coached last year, uh, parts three and four are different this year. And if you coach next year, we'll go back uh, to what we had last year. So, um, I think I'd like I'd to like go through the rules right now. So I'm going to show you how to get to the rules from our Macomb Science Olympiad website. It's macombso.org, and here's the home page. You will go to elementary, then events, and you will go over here on the left, click on Starry Starry Night, and here is our page. Okay, everything that we're presenting today is, is posted on this page, uh, and, and all kinds of good resources. Okay, at the top are the rules, so let's go through those. You can have one or two students on this event. I recommend that you have two, if at all possible, because the test is fairly long. To be able to get through it all, even if you have two students, a lot of times uh, the kids don't get through it all, which is just fine. They get credit for everything that they do and they get right. Um, the, the format is going to be a written test. Uh, true, false, multiple choice, matching, fill in the blank, short answer, all those kinds of things. And we'll all sketch a diagram or two. And it'll be things like um, sketch this particular phase of the moon or show me where the sun, moon and earth are in this type of eclipse. All right, so we're not looking for Van Gogh you know, we're not looking for great artists. We're just looking for clear labeled diagram that they understand what we've asked them to do. So part one is a series of written questions about the solar system. And it's just the general solar system, not specific things uh, like specific uh, details about planets, not any of that, okay? Um, just general mechanics of, you know, how the mo moon moves, how the sun moves, uh, how we move around the sun, things like that. All right, so that's in orbital mechanics, and we'll talk about the uh, astronomical basis for units of time. How do we determine what a day is, a month, a year, and what that also all, all has to do with the sun, the earth, and the moon, and how they move around each other. Uh, they will also have to know about seasons. Why do we have seasons? And 
a little bit more about seasons. Uh, the what the positions of the sun, earth and moon are during particular seasons, things like that. Part D is moon phases. There are eight different moon phases that the kids will have to know and be able to identify. They also need to understand why moon phases occur uh, on the earth and maybe not on other planets. And then part E is talking about eclipses and we will they will learn about solar and lunar eclipses, the conditions that produce them. And again, the order of the sun, moon and earth in those particular eclipses. Part two will look at the celestial sphere. Uh, there are specific concepts, specific terms here that they need to know, and those will essentially be tested during a matching exercise. OK, not much else there with a celestial sphere. Constellations. OK, this is a fun part. Um, they're going to have to be able to identify these particular constellations and none others, okay? So the sky is full of over 80 constellations, but they only need to know these, this set, okay? Um, next to a few of these, you see there is a particular galaxy or a particular star. Here we have Andromeda galaxy in the constellation Andromeda. In Bootes, we have the star Arcturus. All right, so a few of these have major stars, the alpha or beta stars, and then they might also have a galaxy or a nebula that is in that particular constellation. In Hercules, we have a star cluster also. OK, so these are the things that the kids will have to know. In part three, we'll have a series of written questions and visual identification of galaxies and nebulae, as well as questions about the life cycle of stars. There is a glossary. Uh, actually, there are a couple of glossaries on the Starry Starry Night page on the website. One is specific to galaxies and nebulae and the life cycle of stars. So you can look there for some good information on that for, for some terminology. They'll have to understand what galaxies are. They'll have to recognize shapes, whether they're spiral, elliptical, or irregular. And they'll have to know the characteristics of each type of galaxy. For example, uh, is star formation happening in that kind of galaxy? They'll also have to understand what nebulae are and understand the differences between reflection, emission, and dark nebulae. There are a couple other types of nebulae. They're termed nebulae, but they are we, we talk about those when we talk about stellar evolution. Because they have to do with the death of a star. So in stellar evolution. The kids will have to learn about the birth, the main sequence, the as the stars go through red giant and death and then what kind of remnant that they end up as. And the remnants and the life cycle generally is size and mass dependent. All right, so they will have to understand that those differences in the star death are based on the size of the star, the mass of the star. All right, and the, um, the specific remnants they'll have to know are planetary nebula, white dwarf, neutron star, black hole, supernova. All right. And then they will have to visually identify some of those galaxies and nebulae. And we'll talk about that again in a moment. Part four, they'll study telescopes. There are a set, there is a set of um, Earth-based telescopes. There's also a set of space-based telescopes that they will have to be able to recognize and they will have to be able to understand the major findings or the research goals of those telescopes. The questions will be worth one, two or three points depending on how difficult the question is. 
and there will be about 30, 65 questions and about 130 points. And there will be tiebreakers, which will be more difficult questions. Okay. All right, I want to talk about the structure of the test. On the website, there will be a template that you can look at. You can use it if you wish to write your own tests. Uh, but this is essentially what the kids will see. The first part of the test is a slideshow where they will be um, viewing pictures of galaxies, nebulas, different telescopes, um, and they will have to identify those. They will be shown the pictures for 20 seconds at a time. And then at the end of the, uh, all 10 of those, we go back through fairly quickly a few seconds a, a piece so that they can try to catch something they might have missed the first time around and just double check their answers. The um, next section will be multiple choice. And there will be about 10 to 15 multiple choice questions. Next, we'll have some short answer or fill in the blank. Again, probably 10 to 15 of those. Then we have a matching, two matching sections. The first one is going to be matching the telescopes with a description of the telescope or its findings. The second matching section will be some of the various terms from the glossaries or the celestial sphere. And they will be given more definitions or more terms than they can use. This may be flipped and we may have de definitions up here and terms down here to choose from. Um, but their choices will be greater than the number of blanks up here. So they will have to distinguish. Uh, is she asking about a solar eclipse or a lunar eclipse? Where I might list both of those and they have to decide. OK. Next section will be the constellations and they will have to look at star charts and have to decide what that particular constellation is that we've drawn a box around or what that particular star or cluster or galaxy is that we've pointed to with an arrow. And I will show you some star charts in a moment. The last section will be tiebreaker questions. These are a little more difficult than probably the rest of the questions on the test. They're worth more points and the kids will do these if they finish the rest of the test. I don't want them to spend time on these if they have not finished the rest of the test. It won't hurt them if they don't get to them. We only use them in event of a tie and we'll usually have one, maybe two ties in the top 20. So we will look at these if we need to break a tie. OK, now I want to show you some of the specific resources that we have on the website for you. So we've asked the kids to be able to identify pictures of galaxies and nebulae and clusters. So here is your list. This is posted on, on the web page galaxies, nebulae, clusters, and then we have the specific pictures that the kids will have to identify. All right, so this is the Andromeda galaxy. It's also called M31. The kids can memorize the M31 if they care to. Some kids like that kind of thing, um, but Andromeda galaxy or M31 will both get uh, uh, marked correct. Um, there are a lot of pictures of the Andromeda galaxy on the web, OK? But this is the one picture that they would see if I asked them to identify the Andromeda galaxy, OK? So 
we take take them through the galaxies and hopefully we have some interesting pictures up here for them space is pretty cool as far as the variety of things that are out there so hopefully they will enjoy this part of it we also have a telescope table this is where they will learn about the telescopes and they will also have to look at the pictures and be able to identify the pictures of the specific telescopes okay so we've got a short list here of space-based telescopes we've got the name along with the purpose the date launched if it has launched and the various findings or goals of that particular telescope so we've got a few of these and then we've got a page of the ground based telescopes. OK, so this is where they will find that information. And again, the web is a huge place, but I will be getting my resources from the, the things that I'm showing you. So you won't have to look outside of these. Feel free, but you don't have to. All right, there is a sample mini test on the website that you can look at to see what I think of as an easy question versus a more difficult question. These, uh, this is posted with answers and without answers, so you could give this to the kids if you like. So for example, under the topic re revolution and rotation, an easy question might be the scientific term for a planet's trip around the sun is called and then it would be a multiple choice because it's multiple choice and because this is a fairly um, basic concept this question would be worth one point another question to to uh, determine whether or not they understand revolution and rotation might be name a planet that rotates in a retrograde motion and retrograde is one of those terms in the glossaries and then they would have to fill in the blank there are two different planets that rotate in a retrograde motion so they would have to know those and fill those in that would be a three-point question okay so each one of these topics has an easy question and a more difficult question. And that will give you an idea of kind of the, um, the scope of things, the difficulty scope. All right, let's look at star charts. So these again are posted on the website. You can also go if you like and create these uh, on Heavens Above, which is a website where I got these from, but we have them for you, so you don't have to do that. You can just print these out. So this is January, for example. We have constellation names. We have the constellation lines drawn in. And so the first thing you're going to want to do is go through these and highlight the constellations that they do need to know because uh, we're not studying Camelopardalis this year, so they don't have to know that one. OK, so I would uh, highlight the ones that they do need to know first. They will learn these by just memorizing, I would tell stories about Queen Cassiopeia and King Cepheus um, riding their horse Perseus through the sky or you know things like that. There are also tricks and tips like speed to Spica and arc to Arcturus and things like that that you can find on the web to help the kids learn these constellations and learn the relationship between uh, where, where they are. Um, so this is where they start. Then the next chart in the series is January also, but we've removed the names of the constellations. So this is where you can test. Do, do they understand? Do they recognize the shapes? Then once they have this down pretty well, we move to the third chart for January 
which is no lines, no names, just a bunch of dots, okay? So this freaks us out as adults, but the kids somehow get this, okay? You'll have one of the pair that just loves star charts. And this is what they will see on the test. We will have a box around a particular constellation and they will have to tell us what that constellation is. We'll have an arrow pointed at a specific star and they will have to tell us what that star is. They do not have to draw the shapes in on this star chart unless they want to. If that helps them figure out where they are, they're welcome to do that. I will not be looking at these star charts when I'm grading the test. I will just be looking at the answer sheet that I showed you a few minutes ago where they just list the name of what it is we're asking about. If you attend one of the practice tournaments, um, I recommend that you do that, the district tournaments. Uh, there's Chippewa Valley, there's Lons Cruz, there's Utica, and then everybody else gets put into the South Macomb tournament. Um, these are very helpful because the things, the, the test that the kids are going to see at these tournaments is the exact same formula, layout, question difficulty as they will see at the uh, county tournament, okay? So we will not give them a copy of the test after they take it for these tournaments, but you will get a copy of this. This is a score breakdown. So we've got all the categories listed here and how many points were on the test related to that particular category. All right, so you can see constellations. There's quite a few points in there, quite a few points in images. All right, so this kind of tells you what the breakdown is of the points uh, versus the topics. And this, this is a, a, an approximation, but it's pretty close. So what we'll do is we'll write down how many points your kids got on the questions on that particular topic. OK, so for example, if there were, you know, six questions on um, galaxies worth 15 points and they got 13 out of 15, you'd see a 13 here. OK, so this will give you a good resource to be able to then plan ahead to the county tournament and see where what areas that you, the kids need to work on. So maybe they were great at the images, but they were a little bit, need a little bit more study on eclipses. You can see that here. So hopefully this will give you a good way to plan your um, teaching between, between uh, district and regionals. Okay, a few other things. Spelling does not need to be perfect because we know it's very difficult to spell Beetlejuice. When I was coaching, we used to call Beetlejuice Betelgeuse just so we could know how to spell it. Uh, but as long as it's clear what they're going for, we will mark it correct. Um, students can bring only pencils into the testing room. They cannot bring notes. When they get to the junior high, senior high level, sometimes they can bring in notes or even a, a notebook. But uh, for this test, they can only bring pencils in. They can talk quietly with their partners. They can do this test together. They can also divide and conquer. They can pull the test apart, pull the separate pages off, the kid who loves the star charts can pull the last couple pages off and do the star charts while the other kid is is doing some of the other part of the test. This is just a, a suggestion. You're the coach. You decide how they're going to go through it. Um, they can go through the test together, but I I will reiterate this is a long test, so it may be good for them to actually split it up and divide and conquer. 
Um, my goal is not to trick the kids or confuse the kids. I'd like them to enjoy this. I'd like them to have a good experience. So we're not going to put, you know, tricky questions on the test. They're going to be easier and more challenging questions, um, but all of the information that we'll be asking about, you will be able to find in the resources that we're giving you. On the Starry Starry Night page, let me go back to that. Um, we have the this particular handout that I've been showing you is already posted on the website. There is a PowerPoint presentation that I might start with when you're studying um, these topics. So this will give you little pieces on rotation and revolution. Where, how do we start? How do we understand this? What is going to be included in the scope of this topic? There are some video clips that are embedded in some of these. Here's a slide on seasons. A couple slides on seasons. We have, here's the eight moon phases that they're going to have to know. We have quite a few pages on lunar eclipses and solar. This is where you can learn about them and learn about what the kids will need to know about eclipses, about the geometry of the eclipse. OK. A um, little bit about the celestial sphere. Labeled diagram with some of the terms that the kids will need to know. Constellations, here's some of these tips and tricks that I told you about. Ursa Major leaks, pours into Leo, things like that. Um, life cycle of stars, I really like this diagram. Um, it, it does a good job, I think, of showing how a large star versus a small star goes through its life and then what they end up as a white dwarf, a neutron star, a black hole, uh, things like that, supernova remnant. So I really like this chart. I think there's a lot of good information here. We've got a little bit on the three types of galaxies and the kinds of things that they may need to know about those galaxies. And then we've got the different types of nebulae and the things that they will need to know about that. OK, so I would start there just to get my feet under me. Then we've got a list of useful online resources. OK, this is a list of the resources that I'm using to write the test. All right, so it would be really good for you to look at these resources. So some are videos that you can show the kids. Um, some are just websites. But this particular resource here, the lives and deaths of stars, this is from a college course, so this is going to need some interpretation. You can look at this and then, you know, pull from it what you think is important and tell the kids. But I also do have a couple of other resources for the life cycle also that aren't as daunting. Um, but know that this is where I'm getting my information. OK, because there are a lot of other sites out there that are good and that you're welcome to look at. But this is where I'm getting my information. OK, so the galaxies and nebulae are here. The, the, the uh, list and the pictures are here. The telescope, the star charts, the glossaries. Sample tests, the scoring form for the district tournaments. There is a test archive. There are a couple of old tests on here that you're welcome to look at. Um, there are a couple of uh, there's some workshop. There's a workshop that we gave a few years ago uh, when my son was helping me as an event supervisor. He's grown and gone now, so um, but you can watch that. There's an FAQ section, which I hope that you'll use if you have any questions. 
There are already posted here, uh, but feel free if you have a question to ask it here. All right, it's a very easy process. The other thing I want to tell you about is there are uh, some workshops that are coming up about Starry Starry Night. So if you click here on sign up now, you go down to the bottom page and you'll see Starry Starry Night. Lake St. Clair Metro Park is putting on uh, two workshops during the first workshop in February. They'll be covering parts one and two of the rules and then in April they'll be covering parts three and four. So um, it's five dollars per student. Adults you can attend for free. Um, but I would do this if at all possible. This I think could be uh, in addition to your own teaching of the kids. This could be a good way for them to learn. OK. So uh, that's about it for what I have for you today. So uh, if you have any questions, please go through the FAQ system. Thank you very much for attending.